2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. We're preaching through this book. It's not a very large book, but certainly a loud book. It jumps up and shouts at you because uh, Paul was dealing to the church at Thessalonica about uh, some false doctrine, some bad reports that they've been getting. Uh, they had been told that Jesus had already came. Now, you know, Paul dealt with that church, and he told them in 1 Thessalonians about the coming of the Lord. And what a great blessing that is to think Jesus is going to come. And the rapture could come at any moment now. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus has not come yet. But you can imagine this church is it's in trouble because some had said that he's already come. Notice I pick up reading at verse number 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Immediately, Paul says, we have not been gathered and he has not come. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the, at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Paul introduces to us tonight an individual that certainly uh, you've heard of, and that individual is the Antichrist. Uh, the Bible calls, uh, refers to him in this particular passage as the man of sin. Uh, it refers to him. Now, again, the passage here contains the truth about Jesus' second coming. There are some truths that's going to be taught in this passage that you'll not find anywhere else in the Bible. It's, it's totally, completely only going to be exclusively right here uh, to this church at Thessalonica. And so Paul deals with this section. He talks about how that those false teachers had told them the day of the Lord had already come and that they had been left behind. And you can imagine that when he refers to the shaking and the trouble that they was in thinking about the Lord having already came. You could feel that today, uh, friend. Uh, that would be a terrible thought for you to have to think you missed the rapture and you was left because immediately after the rapture uh, there's going to be a time of tribulation that's going to set in upon this earth. Now Paul did not hesitate to teach those young converts that uh, hear the Thessalonians about the coming of the Lord. In fact, he'll go into great detail to help them understand about what time that is and what's getting ready to happen. Uh, there's a lot of doctrinally misunderstandings when you come and talk about the church. Some people don't even believe in a rapture. Uh, you say, well, it's not a biblical term, but the word Bible's not in the Bible, but we know I have one. Trinity's not in the Bible, not in the Word of God, but we know there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And yet the word rapture is mentioned in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, is it called up and it's snatching out. And, and uh, so some of them in that day had thought maybe uh, that the teaching was that Jesus had already raptured his church and they was left behind to go through great tribulation. And it was a terrible thought. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. I'm telling you, great tribulation is going to come after a while. That's never been anything like it. Not World War I, not World War II, not the Korean conflict, not anything that Hitler ever brought about on Israel. Nothing's ever been as bad as the great tribulation that's going to come. I want to tell you right now that I'm glad I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm glad I know I'm going to go to heaven. I believe that any time now Jesus could come. I believe in the intimate return of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At any moment right now, nothing has to be fulfilled. He could split the eastern sky and call his people home. Amen. If you're not saved, that's a terrible thought for you to be left behind. I want to share with you tonight on the Antichrist. Notice several truths that Paul tries 
to bring to our attention. Number one, I want you to see that we need to avoid confusion about the second coming. A lot of people will bring confusion about the second coming. In fact, I used to, and you probably have already, uh, you remember they come out with books, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 88. I mean, I've followed people all down through their life. It's told me when Jesus is going to come. They were wrong. If you set a date, you'll probably be wrong too. You said, don't you believe Jesus is coming soon? I believe that, but I don't know when he's coming. And you don't know. The Bible says, brethren, God's reserved that right for himself. And some of these days, he'll make that, st- that, that call. And i tell you, when he does, uh, he'll be right on time. I don't know. But since I don't know, it behooves me to stay ready every day. I, some of these, I know people, I know people in this county, if they thought Jesus wasn't coming back to 2018, they wouldn't even try to get right to 2018B. Amen? I mean, tell you, but brother, you don't know when he's coming. You better get ready today. Better get prepared. Amen. And Paul uh, deals with this section here. He says, now we beseech you, verse 1, uh, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the second coming of Jesus Christ is divided up in two portions. One of them is, of course, as we call the rapture. But be well aware that the rapture is not the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus came the first time as a baby to this earth. And ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus comes the second time, he'll come to this earth. But the first portion of his coming is what we call the rapture. And that could come at any time. We're going to be snatched out. Every born-again believer is going to be removed. Paul said it'll happen in a moment, a twinkling of an eye. Don't think you're going to wait and get ready when it comes. There won't be time. It'll come so quick. The twinkling of an eye. You're twinkling your eye without even knowing it. There won't be opportunity. Amen. But the rapture will occur and every saved person will leave this world. I said every saved person. Every born-again believer, there'll not be a partial rapture. Every Christian is going to be leaving. And when the church gets gone, and by the way, next week, we're going to talk to you about the one that's holding back the Antichrist today. Now, you know why, uh, brethren, right now, the Antichrist, I I believe he's born uh, somewhere in Europe right now. He's going to be, he's being schooled because when he comes on the scene, he won't come on as a baby. He'll come on as a full-grown man, educated and ready to take his place and somewhere there's an antichrist right now amen and he's getting ready to fulfill his mission and to become the president of the united states of europe the common market is we've heard in the past and so uh, he says there's a rapture and he's going to take us all up and then there's going to be that revelation when jesus comes back and we read about that at revelation 19 Uh, whenever he shows up on his white horse, hallelujah. And he's going to be taking care of things and get everything in order. But one of these days, a rapture is going to happen. You remember Paul said in 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 16 and 17, I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He said, if you believe, brethren, that Jesus died and rose again, even those which sleep in Jesus, will God Bring with him. Now, that's how that's going to work. And, brother, when he comes, God's going to call us up. And we're going to be called up to be with the Lord in the clouds. And forever shall you be with the Lord. And wherefore, comfort you one another these words. We're going to be called up, raptured out of here. And then, brethren, there's going to come a terrible time of trouble. Now, I want to say two things about the confusion about the uh, second coming that he mentions here. Number one, he says, watch out and avoid because there's going to be a time of trouble. Notice they say that right here in these verses. In verse number two, notice on the screen verse number two. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as as though it might come uh, from us that the day of Christ is at hand. It is at hand, but it is not come. But here's what you need to avoid. Uh, The day of the Lord has not happened already. And nobody really knows the day when it's going to happen. But these people was in deep trouble. They were shaken. And so I say, here's the trouble. You see, wonder why they were shaken. Why were they so troubled? Well, you can only imagine in your mind if you thought that the church had been raptured out and you was left to experience the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, 
and the tribulation that's going to be poured out upon this world, that Jesus said that nothing's ever been like it before on this earth. And nothing will ever be like it again. And they, you talking about trouble. No wonder they was trouble. My God Almighty, if I thought I was going into tribulation, I would, I would be troubled right now. I don't know why more sinners out there is not troubled thinking about what's going to come upon this world during the time of tribulation. They need to read the revelation. Amen. They ought to come here on Sunday morning listen to Brother Hubbard teach it. Amen. I'll tell you, it'll open your eyes. It'll give you some burden. It'll give you some conviction. And it'll help you. And, and so they, they thought that they were left behind. You can feel the trouble they was in. Shaken and trouble was upon them because they thought that they was left. Now note, if you would, the word here, troubled. The word troubled there means to cry out loud, to wail. That's right. I mean, these folks was really troubled. They was in pain and agony and to cry out loud or to wail out loud because they thought they're left behind and tribulation has done set in upon them. But notice that he says in that verse number two, he says in verse number two, notice what he says. Amen, Brother Leon. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters from us. Now notice, notice the second thing we need to avoid. Not only the, the trouble that was here, but notice the truth. The truth. When he says, don't be troubled, though they, somebody spiritual has gave you a word. Uh, you know, we got people all the time who want to get in the spirit or something, and they want to say that I, God spoke to me. Now, folks, I just want to be honest with you tonight. If God's ever going to speak to you, he's going to use this book right here. When you get some people that's too spiritual to follow this book, bless God, you ought to write them off. They're a heretic and they're a false prophet. If God's got anything to say to you, he's going to say it right here. But Paul says, here's, here it is. He says, though somebody that's in spiritual minded that says they've had a vision, they've had a dream, or they was under a tree somewhere, and God gave them these golden books. We know them as the Book of Mormons. And so they think that come directly from God. I want to tell you right here is the only book you need. And here's the only story you need to follow. And the only truth you'll ever find is in the great word of God. But notice what he, he says. Don't, don't get it from a spirit nor from a word, nor from a letter that somebody else has written trying to bother you. Now, the Thessalonians had been ensnared by the cord of Ura. They had, uh, had, had had people tell them, and the information they were getting was dangerous information. And some of them said that we're spiritual and we're so spiritual. Hey, by the way, you know, there are some people that's a lot more spiritual than you and me, or they think they are. And they get these revelations from God all the time. I want to tell you, brother, and let me say one more time. The only revelation God's going to give you is right here. And you might as well just get in it and dig in it because it's more than you can handle. That's right. So he says, don't be moved or shaken by someone that's uh, by spirit. Or by word, somebody give a message out. When they get up and they want to say, Jesus has already come. And they try to, try to tell that kind of garbage. All right, and, and you got people giving messages today. Uh, and I'll tell you what they are. Uh, they're false prophets. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets has gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Amen. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And he has the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 through 3. Uh, he says, beware. There's some false prophets out there. There are false teachers out there. And when you go to talk about eschatology or end time events, you're going to hear everything under the God Almighty's Son. 
but you can't believe everything you hear. Amen right there, Brother Billy. Uh, because there's some false prophets out there. You better get back to this blessed old book. That's right. You say, what about the extra books? I told you there's only one. Those people got those extra books, didn't get it from God. They got too spiritual. So first of all, avoid confusion about the second coming. Uh, the trouble that it comes, but note the truth uh, that Paul says he wants to share. Secondly, I want you to notice that we need to anticipate the coming of apostasy. Look back in your Bible, look at the screen tonight. Notice verse uh, 3. Look back at verse number 2 as well. Let me read verse number 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, by letters, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Notice verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, I think what he's saying here is we need to anticipate coming apostasy. We need to expect there is going to be some deceiving. That somebody's going to try and deceive someone. My Lord, there's, if there's ever been an age where people are gullible, it's America right now. I'm telling you, <laughs> politically gullible, religiously gullible, I mean, you know, somebody said, you know, I'm going to vote. They, they just said why they're going to vote for the next president, and most of them is going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Don't tell me they're not deceived. Somebody give me a witness right there. I, and they said, why are you going to do it? I just think it's a good time, thing to have a woman around. Well, but they, ought, they ought to get him a woman and take her home with them, amen? I mean, but I, I'm telling you, they're gullible. They don't have any reasoning behind what we're doing. I never saw a day where people don't have convictions and don't believe in something and stand for something. But that's what it is. But he said we need to anticipate coming apostasy. He says the day of the Lord's going to come. But he said let no man deceive you by any means. The Thessalonians had been terrified at the very prospect of the horrors of the day of the Lord. And they was thinking about the rapture had come and tribulation had set in. And Paul says, for that they shall not come except there come a fallen away first. The word translated fallen away uh, just simply means apostasy. Now, uh, let, me, let me probably, let me, let me say two things about anticipate the common apostasy. Uh, number one is, beware that do, you don't be deceived. The deceiving's going to come. And you notice in the, uh, ch verse 3a there, the Bible says, let no man deceive you by any means. Now we have a day where people are being deceived. I, I think I think one of the biggest deceivers that I know of right now is in her White House. And people are so gullible to accept and to believe what he says and to be called up by it. Uh, and, and deceit just seems to be something that goes over and people goes, goes along with. And yet all through the Bible we've been warned because the devil is a deceiver. The devil is a big deceiver, so he's deceiving people. And so the Thessalonians were being deceived. And oh, listen to the Bible. It warns you. The Bible says in Romans 7 and 11, For sin taken occasion has by commandment deceived me, and by it slew me, Paul said. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, the Bible says, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ, be beguiled, be deceived. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 4, and Jesus answered and said to him, Take heed that no man deceive you. We live in an age where people are being deceived. It, they, it, they just they follow anything. They, it just seems like it don't matter, that they don't have a grip on the Word of God or the God of the Word. And they just grip things and they grab things and they believe anything. 
Brother, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. You need to know who you are. You know what you stand for. Because the world and the devil is out to deceive you. But note not only the deceiving, but notice the departure. If you notice again in this verse number 3, look again at verse number 3. The Bible says, let no man deceive you, because that's happening. It's happening today. Uh, by any means, for the day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first. They're going to be a fallen away. The word fallen away simply means they're going to be a departure. There's going to be a departure. Uh, I know that they several people has different opinions some in their believing in fact one of my one man that I do respect and and listen to is J. Vernon McGee and uh, through the Bible with J. Vernon McGee but J. Vernon McGee uh, says that this falling away could be two things and that's possible that it could he says this falling away could be the departure of the church at the rapture and before tribulation can come, there must be a, a departure of the church and we're going to be leaving. And the Spirit of God, as we know him now, it's bound here and works through the churches and works through the believers, is going to depart. That's the holding power. It's keeping him from coming right now. Amen? But that's really probably not what I really believe it is. Listen to what I believe it is. When the Bible says here that don't be deceived, it's indication about apostasy. It goes right on behind that to say, except there come a falling away first. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get your minds right now and get it where it needs to be. I've never saw in all of my life a falling away in churches that I'm seeing right now. I've never saw a liberal movement as strong and powerful and falling away from the blessed old truths of this book and falling away from the good God of heaven like I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing churches that's going to be closing their doors. They're cutting down Sunday night services. They'll be cutting down other services. They'll, they'll, they'll be getting rid of revivals. There'll be no more revivals. They're cut, there's, a, there's a falling away right now to where many churches never record one baptism a year. Thousands of churches last year never recorded one baptism. We've got a falling away from God. We're, we're, we're seated right now in this day. Not only that, but there's a forsaken of traditional beliefs. There's a forsaken in there's a departure from it. People are getting away from the Lord's truths and from God. You can see it. Churches are drying up. And may I say, worst of all, that when I'm told that America will become a Muslim country by 2020, that's a falling away. People are falling away from the traditional truths of the Word of God. People are becoming gullible to the other religions, even to the Muslim movement. And you can see the original old-fashioned church is shrinking, and they're falling away right now. Apostasy, liberalism, and churches are dying. You think I like to say what I'm saying? I don't like to say what I'm saying. I'm just telling you the very truth that bless God, you better start looking up because Jesus Christ is coming. God said that when you see these things happening, a falling away, and it's happening right now. If you go to other churches, if you see a brother, one of these days you mark down what I'm saying, we're in decline like I've never saw it before. There's a falling away, a liberal, tolerant to anything. It's getting worse all the time. A departure from the old-fashioned faith. We got people today, you'll find a time where they don't even like old-fashioned preachers. This old boy right here will be on the hit list. Bless God, I'm old-fashioned. That's right. I still believe a homosexual needs to get saved, amen? I believe it's an abomination before God. You say, that'll get you someday. 
Probably will. Because this country's in a falling away. Church is in a falling away. I wonder how many clerks we've got to take the stand that the old girl up in Kentucky's taking. If I lose my job, I'll just have to lose it, she said. I wonder if Christians, I wonder how many Christians are going to be real Christians in a little while. You know, he'll show up after a while whether or not we are stand for God or not. You know that? Or we're we'll compromise. Yeah, it sure will. So, notice, secondly, he says, anticipate coming apostasy because the deceiver is coming and the departure is already come. Let me say lastly, I want you to see thirdly. We need to acquire insights about the end times. Now, if you notice back in your Bible, verses 3 and following, let no man deceive you by any means, for the day shall not come except there come a fallen away first. And the man of sin, wait a minute, who? The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Well, who in the world is the man of sin? Who is he talking about that's, that's going to show up? Who is the son of perdition? Does everybody know that's the one that's headed to destruction? Judas Issachary. Somebody used to think Judas would become the Antichrist because the Bible said that Judas was the son of perdition, but he was the son of destruction. He was a son of Satan, and he was a son of destruction. Notice verse 4. In verse 4, he goes on to say, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that's called God, so that he's worshipped, so that he as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Now quickly, notice, acquire some insights about the end times. We need to understand what's going to be going on. What's going to be happening? What's according to the holy word of God? I'm not in the book of Revelation, Brother Hubbard. I'm in the book of 2 Thessalonians. I'm, I'm in this little book that Paul says here, you folks need to know a little bit about what's happening. And I think we all need to have a little insight about the end times. And so the man of sin, uh, here's a man of sin. The Bible just simply implies here that he's going to be revealed or the Antichrist, uh, the man of sin, the Antichrist is going to show up one of these days. Paul said he's going to show up. Now, of course, next week I'm going to tell you when he can show up because I want you to know right now that he can't show up tonight. He may be somewhere ready to walk out. I mean, the United States of Europe is already formed. You know that. He might be getting to school and ready to become the president, but brethren, as long as God's Holy Ghost and church is here, uh, they, they, he can't come in. Uh, but he's going to. The, notice, if you would, quickly, notice the Antichrist appearance. Notice verse 3 said, The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The uh, Antichrist is going to appear. He's going to be revealed. He's going to be made manifest. The man of sin is hidden right now. Somewhere he's hidden, but one day he's going to appear. That's right. Someday in the future. How, how far out there in the future? I really don't know. I, I told you that. I don't know when Jesus is coming. All I can tell you is the falling away is already here. Uh, the Antichrist's system is already established. Uh, we already know that he's got the, what he's wanting it, and it's coming around. Uh, he's called the lawless one or the son of perdition, because he's going to be the son of doom and the son of destruction because the devil is going to give him his power and he's going to become the leader of all of those ten nation common markets. Now you say, if he's going to appear, where's he going to come from, Brother Carpenter? He's going to come from Europe. Uh, being no question about it, he'll come out of the, the uh, Daniel's ten toes the Roman kingdom will come back together. It's already come together, uh, and so he'll come from there. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, and he had seven heads and ten horns. Uh, out of the sea of humanity, 
When he talks about a sea in Revelation, he's not talking about water. He's talking about a sea of humanity. He's talking out of the ten uh, nations of Europe. He's talking about this great civilization that out of that is going to come this fellow who's got his uh, ten. And you'll find that ten a lot of times. Horns is a, a description of power. And he's going to have the ten nation empowered behind the Antichrist. It's going to come out on the scene. Uh, by the way, this country is needing a leader. I mean, uh, the Republicans think they've got 15 or 16 that could do it. Democrats got several can do it. They'll find out none of them can do it. And so they're going to look for somebody to heal the problems that this country has. And lo and behold, if there don't come the man, wow, they've been looking for him a long time. He's called the Antichrist. Revelation 13 and 5 says, And he was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. When the Antichrist comes, he will speak with a good vocabulary. He won't be like me, I'll tell you right now. He'll be slick, willy. I mean, the guy will have a tongue. He'll have it. That's what the Bible says. Uh, they've been some presidents in the past. John F. Kennedy was a good speaker. Ronald Reagan was a good speaker. Barack Obama evidently is a good speaker. And people hear them and they follow them because people who can say the things they need to hear or they want to hear, they follow people like that. And when the Antichrist comes, all of those guys pull in together won't be able to match him when he speaks. And boy, they'll be, they'll be wanting to hear more and they'll be listening for more. And he'll sway the multitudes. Daniel chapter 7, verse number 8b. And it says, and a mouth speaking great things. Daniel also said in Daniel 7, verse number 20, and of the ten horns, the ten nations, that the Antichrist will be over the United States of Europe, that were in his head, and of the other which came up before, and three fell, even at that horn, had an eye and a mouth, and spake great things, whose whose look was more stout than his fellow. This guy was a standout. He was a lot better looking, a lot stronger looking, a lot a better talker than anybody else around him. There was hardly no one that could match him, according to what Daniel said right here. And so uh, the Bible has told us that there's going to be a revealing. The, and what we're going to know today is that exactly is going to take place. So the Antichrist appearance, but notice also quickly, and we'll be leaving in a moment or two, but notice the Antichrist is action. Now look back in your screen and notice again verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that's called God, that he is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, we talked to you about the Antichrist appearing, but here is his action. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that's called God. Now this person, and I'm not talking about a system. The Antichrist will have a system, but it's not a system. Uh, but he will have a system. And uh, this person comes on the scene. He wants to be exalted. He'll exalt himself above anyone else. He'll be self-centered. He'll be power-hungry. He'll be fame-crazed, immoral, unjust. And since he is called the man of sin and the lawless one, you can only imagine what this man is going to be doing to publicly promote sinfulness. Homosexuality, pornography, drug use, and the worst of it all will be a promotion of this man. He's the man of sin. Oh, somebody thinks he's already got here, don't you? No, he's not got here yet. But you talk it's bad now. Amen. It's going to get worse. The Antichrist. Now, the devil's always wanted to exalt himself above God, has he not? Isaiah 14. The Bible said, verse 13 and 14, the devil said, and, and the, listen to what the Bible said, Thou hast uh, 
said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit upon the mount of the congregation the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That's what the devil said. He's always wanted to exalt himself above God. And when he gets the Roman Empire and he, he gets the Antichrist and brethren, he's going to have all kinds of power. We got to sum this up. But when the Antichrist makes his appearance and goes exalting himself, he will be the, the president of the United States of Europe. The Arabs that so an enemy to Israel and hates Israel today and wish they were dead and trying to kill them all the time. Those Arab nations have become stronger and more powerful. And Israel will need a rescue. And the word of God says that they will sign a peace treaty with the Antichrist for seven years. Seven years? Sure. Seven, what's that? Yeah, sure. Revelation, seven years. They'll, he'll sign a peace treaty. The Antichrist will allow them to build back their temple uh, and protect them from the Arabs. And, and then, of course, if you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, you'll know uh, that the Arabs is going to gather in Russia to be a help and still come down on Israel. And, of course, they'll be rescued. But here's what I'm getting at. They'll rebuild the temple. And when the Antichrist gets to his fullest of his thoughts, he's going to go into the temple and present himself to be God. He's going to exalt himself that he's God. Jesus said in Matthew 24, it would be a, the day of the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet because the Antichrist presents himself as God. That's an abomination. And when Israel refuses the Antichrist, there'll be a desolation because, brother, it's going to be massive and it's going to be bad. But listen to me. Our time is up. But listen to me. We're living in some bad times. But you don't know nothing what's getting ready to happen. Jesus is soon coming. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you've got family not saved, you need to get them saved. Our time's running out as we know it. And we better be prepared. I want us to stand. We're going to give a song of invitation tonight. And if you're here tonight and you're not prepared to meet Jesus, you're not prepared for heaven, then I want to invite you to step out of one of them pews and walk down here at this altar and kneel at this altar and ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sin and come into your heart and save you. I don't know when the end is coming. I told you I don't. But I, you don't either. And the rapture may occur tonight. What if it did? Would you be left behind? We're going to give a song of invitation. If God's speaking to your heart and you need to come tonight, I wish you'd do it on the first verse of this song right now. If you need to come, you come.